audio drama. Episode 3 The Photograph Part 1 of 2 Written by Benton Hodges Down, please. My head is killing me. Thank you. I've got a splitting headache, and this crap is not helping. Oh, I didn't think someone with your experience got hangovers anymore. Well, I usually get to sleep them off. Well, I'm sorry, but we need to get there early. Trust me, this is going to get you excited. Well, it better be worth coming this far out into the middle of nowhere for. Where are we going again? Porum Cove. Check my phone. I need the directions on it. Well, what's the passcode? One, 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 one. Wow. Secure. Oh, like it matters, but how close are we? A few more miles. I swear, this photo better be the most haunted thing in the UK. It's over here, by the bathroom. It had been three hours since the hangover faded, and I now found myself in a small seaside town called Porham Cove, a homely nest of old architecture safely veiled in a large cove. It truly felt like taking a step back in time. Getting here was no easy feat, with high cliffs on either side and a dense forest surrounding it. The journey took hours, with plenty of map checking to exacerbate it. It was certainly picturesque, though. When the tide was in, the mouth of the cove was filled with fishing boats, bobbing like colourful specks on the horizon, bathed in a swath of golden light. Abigail and I were following a woman named Mrs Corr through a claustrophobic corridor to view a photo. Mrs Corr was a wisp of a woman, thin and delicate. Her fragility wasn't helped by recent circumstances. She had a thin smile that didn't quite reach her eyes, and a quiet nature that just suited me perfectly. Abigail, on the other hand, was already extremely animated. And when did you discover... it? A few days ago. I found it while dusting. Here. It must have been here since we bought the place. And we were the first paranormal team to look at it? Yes. And what exactly are we looking for? There, the blonde girl with the pigtails. And you're sure that's her? Of course I'm sure. Look, this was her latest class photo. Hmm, it's definitely similar. Do you mind if I take a photo of them? The photo in question was a black and white shot taken atop a pier. It's a bright sunny day, yet that cheer isn't reflected by the tone of the picture. A sparse crowd stands looking off into the distance towards the end of the pier. They seem confused or shocked. More confusing is the focus of the photo. In centre frame and seemingly oblivious to the events that have startled the crowd is a couple dressed in an old style of clothing, 40s or 50s at a glance. In fact, if I hadn't been told otherwise, I would assume it's a novelty souvenir photo, but neither of them resembles the core family. The pier is busy. Not the level of a Weir's Wally photo, but enough to create a crowd, all similarly dressed to the couple in the centre of the photo. And two rows back, pigtails and all, is the alleged girl. Similarly surprised. The cause for concern, however, is that the girl, pigtails and all, was Charlotte Corr's daughter, Lucy. And she had disappeared three years ago. I guess it's a dumb question, but any idea how your daughter wound up on a photo on your wall? I was hoping you and Mr Hunter here could explain that. Let's go back into the lounge. I'll, I'll bring the photo with us. So... Lucy disappeared when exactly? Three years ago. 17th of June. And what exactly happened? Oh, we don't know. She was in her room while her father and I discussed the hotel. After, I went to her room to get her for dinner and she was gone. The window had been left open and she'd packed a bag. 
Oh, I'm sorry, that must have been awful. Well, we called the police, and the whole village helped with the search, but none of us could find a trace of her. It was like she'd vanished. We were suspects originally, but the police ruled us out, eventually. But did she have any friends within Porham? School friends or, or playmates? Someone she might have reached out to? We asked, but they hadn't seen her. We hadn't heard anything about her until a few days ago, when I discovered her in the photo. Did you take the photo? No. I don't know who took it. Did she often go to the pier? No. Do you think maybe she snuck off to the pier and got caught in that photo? No. How can you be so certain? The pier burnt down in the 50s. Its wreck has been left there since. OK, that's weird. Who owned the house before you? Maybe it's a photo of the previous owners. Well, the building had been owned by the bank since the 70s. The owner died and the hotel was foreclosed. It's a long time not to be sold. Well, the owner had died here, which affects sales. And it's a small town. Not to mention the tourism sort of died here after the pier burnt down. It seems only geologists, hikers and architecture enthusiasts came afterwards. I hate to ask, but how are you certain the girl in the photo is your daughter? I mean, she's, she's dressed like everyone else on the pier. Maybe it's someone else's daughter who looks incredibly similar. You can see because her head is turned. Look, that, that small patch was a scar from where she bumped into the coffee table. You can see it in her class photo too. Feel free to jump in any time, James. I'm thinking. What does your husband do, Mrs Corr? He used to do website design. And how long have you lived here? Five years. We moved here a few years after Lucy was born, so she could grow up away from the chaos of the city. And what's with the building work going on outside? We're trying to renovate the extra rooms to rent them out. Restore its status as a hotel. We tried years ago, but progress stopped when... We only recently found the strength to pick it all back up again. That's why I came in here to dust. The photo was right here, where it is now. What's this symbol on the back? I don't know. I did Latin at school, but it isn't that. And my husband can't find it online. The symbol in question was a series of concentric lines surrounded by rings and runic drawings. It seems to have been applied to the photo by hand with a black pen. Off the top of my head, I couldn't recognise the symbol, which ruled out the usual Christian symbols. Mr Corr had likely found an obscure symbol on the internet, spruced it up with some actual demonic runes, possibly Norse or Greek. Let me get a photo of it. I think we've got all we need. Abigail, let's go. That's it? Yes. What was all that about? What? Well, where was your usual snark, or your interest at least? I don't want to waste good snark on bullshit. How can you say that was fake? Did you not see the photo? Yes, and Stalin was rather good at Photoshop too. So? Her husband does website design. He probably knows his way around editing software. They're trying to open a hotel out in the sticks and need a good way to market it. It's just an attempt to get themselves on a travel guide list of haunted places to stay the night. (laughs) A travel guide? You really need to enter the 21st century. (sighs) Fine, what's today's equivalent? Uh, BuzzFeed's top 15 spookiest places to get your vacation on. Number 13 will blow your mind. Thank you for reminding me why I hate the internet. And youths. You're welcome. Anyway, what do you think about the daughter going missing? Probably wandered off and starved. Or drowned. Or was kidnapped. The real scary part of this story is their bad parenting. I think there's more to this story. And I think you're wrong. Did you see how much detail was in that black and white photo? Way too much for a standard camera of the day. So, that's it. Wave it off as a scam. All that travel wasted just because you don't want to investigate it. What's the real reason? (sighs) She lied. Who, Mrs. Cole? Yes. She said we were the only paranormal investigators she called. Okay, and? 
A colleague of mine mentioned this exact case to me in an email a few weeks ago. Why would she lie, then? Because she clearly didn't get her spooky seal of approval from him and moved on to the next fool who would listen. Eventually, they'll find someone gullible enough to label this case unsolvable. Well, why don't you reach out to him? I'll drop him an email. Thank you. So, want to grab some lunch? Sure. I bet the fish and chips around here is at least passable. Abigail has a highly active imagination. She hasn't done this long enough to know that for every genuine person who believes they're suffering a haunting, there are ten charlatans and con merchants, willing to say or do anything that gets their case a bit of spotlight. I knew I was being cynical. Mrs. Cor didn't seem like someone who would want to profit off of her daughter's disappearance, but it's always the ones you don't expect. She had lied, after all. Straight to our faces. My colleague Dr. Robson had yet to respond to our last correspondence from a week prior regarding the signal. He was not responding to my latest email. I tried messaging him, but the direct message remained unsent. I was desperate not to give this case a second thought, that's what these con merchants want, but Robson seemed a bit more into it at the time, and now he wasn't responding. So, against my gut, I gave him a call. or is no longer in service. So I called his assistant. Hello? Uh, is this the office of Dr. Robson? It is. I'm his PA. This is James Hunter. Howard was a colleague of mine. I was calling to ask about his whereabouts. I can't seem to get in contact with him. I'm afraid Dr. Robson was declared missing by the police three days ago. When did you last hear from him? I've told everything to the police. He went there to investigate a picture. It contained a missing girl in it. Following his meeting with the cause, he asked me to get him a meeting with an archivist with a local paper and was headed to an interview. He never arrived at it, however. His car was found crashed at the side of the road in the middle of a forest, but he wasn't anywhere to be found. They say he had water planed and spun out. Hmm... It hasn't rained much round here, though. Yeah. Seems to have been very unlucky. Oh. Well, uh, can you forward me any notes he had on the Porham case? He never left electronic notes. Always carried a notebook on his person. But he did say in his call that this case warranted further investigation. Right. Uh, thank you. I took another look at the photo of the pier. Was it to sate my own curiosity, or to get Abigail off my back? The same feeling of unease that struck me on its first viewing was still there, even through the photo of a photo. She had that knowing smirk when I asked to view the photo again. Dr. Robson was right. It was... interesting. My gut still said it was a hoax, but if this was a real photo, then it did warrant some important questions. The panic of the crowd, yet the complete obliviousness of the couple, as if they were in two separate photographs, taken at two different times. Something was happening right off the edge of the photo, enough to startle a crowd. In fact, only one thing in the photo could date it. A building in the background, surrounded by scaffolding and the specks of workmen in the distance. Sir, does it look like I was alive when this was taken? No, but that's why records exist. And you want to know when we were renovated? We renovate very frequently here, as there is a certain level of quality we like to keep. Noted. Do you happen to have records of when you were renovated, though? I'm sure a financial record could be found. And, sir, if you want me to check, I expect you at least have a meal. Sure. Cod and chips, please. Do you serve drinks? Yes, sir. Bourbon on the rocks, then, please. Right away, sir. Whilst the officious manager slunk back into the restaurant to retrieve the records, I sat and surveyed the ostentatious eatery. 
Despite the glossy marble pillars, extravagant water features and high-class table decorations, it remained empty. Perhaps due to the time of day, or maybe the service, it wasn't busy. I was alone, and yet I couldn't shake that feeling. The feeling that had arisen since I arrived in Porham. The feeling that makes your hair stand on end, that feels like something burning into the back of your skull, like something twisting in your guts. I couldn't shake the feeling I was being watched. Well, sir, it seems in the photo you have provided that this is not a renovation team, but decorators. They were finishing the sign in 1952. Kachimo's decorating started in late 51 and was finished in 52. Okay. It seems our sign was the final piece of work done to complete Kachimo. In fact, Kachimo was finished the same day that the pier burnt down. So this photo? Yes, it seems. Now will you be paying cash or card? So, the pier is a somewhat contentious issue around these parts. Really? Yeah. I asked several people around town, none who were alive during the fire, mind you, but everyone has heard the legend, and everyone has heard it differently. Some say it was a grease fire, others say it was intentional. One said a boat collided with a pier, the sun reflecting off glass and an unextinguished cigarette, and of course, ghosts. Ghosts? Yeah, they have myths. Like every small town. The pier has more supernatural lore now, though. Dog walkers on the beach say they see strange lights from the wreckage at night and noises that make their dogs uneasy. Fishermen don't sell past it, and in their words, you cast off either side of it, never cross it. Bad luck. That was their exact word. Paraphrased, but with slightly less sailor talk. And what's the actual story? The fire chief suspected arson initially. As it seemed, the fire had two points of origin, but it later seemed to be completely different fires that happened at the same time. Just an unlucky coincidence. But I'm assuming that the real story got buried under the myth. Yeah. Ghost Hunters UK once visited the pier, said it was filled with orbs, sightings and all sorts. Not exactly the most reliable of sources. Yeah, not really. What did you find out about the photo? At least parts of it are genuine. The building in the background, Kachimo, was finished on the same day. It's far away, but the exterior of Kachimo in Mrs. Kaur's photo matches development photos taken by Kachimo during its construction. It's way too precise to be faked. But? That just means that a photo was taken on the day of the fire. Whether or not the missing girl appearing here is real, well, I don't know yet. But this photo was taken during, or just prior to the fire, that burnt down said pier. Kachimo was finished this day. In fact, the scaffolders began packing up the day Kachimo was finished. They stopped to help during the pier incident. So, this is like a a disaster photo? Like the photo of the Hindenburg up in flames? Sort of. And if you look here... What the... What? Third row back... In the suit. How did I not see that? What? It's Dr. Robson. It's James Hunter. We spoke recently about Dr. Robson. I need to know who he booked an appointment with. Please call me back. Ugh, why did we have to come at night? Because I'm not waiting another day to see this. There isn't much to see, just some charred wet wood. Okay, this is creepy. It's like these pillars are clawing out of the ground. Abigail was right. It was unsettling. The remains of the pier that hadn't been swept away by the tide was a long maze of charred wooden pillars that jutted out of the ground at dramatic angles. In a few areas, the walkway of the pier was still barely intact, offering a brief bit of shelter from the light rain overhead. I needed to see the pier, though. Something was going on here. But what? Anything? No. 
God damn cheap piece of crap. Ah! Abigail! Abigail! Are you all right? Oh, yeah, sorry, I tripped on something in the dark. Oh, God, my clothes are soaking. Here, take my coat. Wait, what was that? What was what? That, on that pillar there. At least five feet up the jagged, charred wooden pillar was a carving. Seemingly scratched into the pillar with a sharp knife or implement was a series of lines and symbols surrounded by an oval. Like an eye, almost. It was unsettling. More unsettling than it matched the symbol on the back of the photo mounted on Mrs. Call's wall. Get a photo of it. Let's get you out of the cold. Oh, thank God, my teeth won't stop chattering. I paused and let her go ahead, keeping an eye on her as she rubbed her arms for warmth and shivered, heading off towards the car. When she left my view, I took a good look at my surroundings. From where I was standing, I could see the outline of Kachimo in the distance, along with its neighbouring buildings. In fact, if I had been on top of the pier, I would be directly where the photographer would have been standing, directly above this carved symbol. I sent the photo off to Dr. Harry Backman, an expert on runes and symbols. Abigail was fine, a few cuts and scrapes on her hands and knees, but nothing permanent. Once she'd warmed up, we got right back to arguing. You're still hesitant to think this is supernatural, aren't you? I'm intrigued. But yes, nothing has happened yet that makes me think this is supernatural. What about your friend? Correspondent. Ah, yes, I forgot you don't have friends. He has disappeared, yes, and appeared in an old photograph, which is odd, but not beyond the realm of reality. Mr Corr had met with Dr Robson. He had taken a look at their photograph and he was following up on a lead. Is he a sceptic or a believer? Sceptical, completely. But he was rushing off to speak with an archivist. So it seems, but he had an accident and he's now missing, presumed dead. And the picture? Just like their daughter, he could have been photoshopped in. There isn't a shortage of photos of him on the internet, and a tech-savvy guy like a website designer could easily find them. Think about it. They hear on the news that he's gone missing and they add him to the photo. What interests me is why they lied. I don't know. Maybe they didn't want to scare us off. Well, they had to know that we would pick them up on their lie. Paranormal investigators have a tight-knit community. We talk. So maybe they wanted to be caught in the lie. A disappeared investigator kept all hush-hush could add to the mystique. I guess we are talking about it. Or they had nothing to do with it, and something weird really is going on. Unlikely. So, what should be our next port of call? Well, I'd like to speak to the couple in the photograph. They're the only ones who seem oblivious to the fire, as if they don't belong there. Okay, well, it's a small town. If they were local, maybe someone at the town hall would know. I'd like to know who the photographer was, too. If he left that symbol on the back of the photo and the pier, then they're supposed to be linked, fake or not. Maybe the people at the town hall will know if a photographer was employed by the pier. OK, I'll add that onto the list. Anything else? I'm waiting to hear back from Dr Robson's assistant. Hopefully he can shed light on the nature of the interview with the archivist and why he rushed off in such a hurry. Well, we are kind of stuck there. Yeah, we have to wait on that one as well as the report on the symbol. What about Lucy? For a picture with a missing girl, she seems like an afterthought. If the mother isn't being honest with us, there's little we can do that will be credible. A full search of that B&B is needed, though. The old parts that have not been renovated yet. If her claim that the photo was left by the previous occupants is true, maybe they left other things too. When you know someone is capable of lying to your face, it stains their words like blots of ink. Everything out of Lucy's mother's mouth was instantly suspect. Something as innocuous as them stating how long they'd lived there, or the last time they used a room, was up for debate in my mind. So, how's the search going? It's going well. Found some interesting things. Whilst Abigail was dealing with the people at the town hall, I had returned to the house that contained the painting. 
I was in the oldest portion of the house, one of the guest rooms, currently hunched over and checking the back of cabinets while she made idle conversation. I could tell she was probing. She had something on her mind that she didn't want to share. Huh. There was something hidden behind this panel. Is that a... necklace? It's an amulet. St. Christopher, patron saint of travellers. It's supposedly a protective charm for pilgrims and wanderers. Why would it be left behind there? Well, maybe they'd run out of air miles. Your daughter's disappearance. Was there anything strange leading up to it? In what way? Were there any sightings? Sleepless nights, strange visitors? Well, she'd grown more distant. She wanted to play outside more and stay away from home longer. We just assumed she was growing up, but she seemed off whenever she was in the house. Really? She was always quite spaced out. Whenever we tried to talk to her, she'd jump as if she didn't realise we were there. How was her relationship with her father? Sam loved Lucy so much. They could talk for hours about nothing. <laughs> they seemed just to connect more. Was there any tension at home? Why do you ask? Well, sometimes strange occurrences can be a manifestation of problems at home. Disappearances, too. If you are inclined to believe such things, poltergeists are a manifestation of repressed emotion. I... well, we would argue sometimes. Over small, stupid things, and, and Lucy would always cry and run to her room, worried that she got Dad into trouble. She always felt guilty about her arguments, even if they didn't involve her at all. Had there been an argument just before her disappearance? Yes. He was worried about the hotel and its restoration. Things had been strange since we got here and he was worried about our future. And this argument got loud? Yes. We expected to find Lucy in her room, pillow over her ears, but the window was open. Her little backpack had been packed too. We, we knew she'd run away. Why did you lie to us about being the first paranormal team that you called? What? It was a straightforward question. I, uh, well, I... He showed up, looked around, found something and then disappeared. It was frightening. We needed help looking into this, but I didn't want to scare everyone away. I'm sorry I lied to you both. What had he found? What? Dr Robson. He left in quite a hurry for a meeting with an archivist. What had he found? An old notepad. He found it in the attic, behind a loose patch of insulation. Someone had taken great care to hide it. Anything special about the pad? It had a drawing on the front of it, a, a symbol of some sorts. Like the one behind the photo? No, different. Anything else in the notepad? It seemed to be just a series of names, numbers and dates. Nothing unusual. Dr Robson left, saying he'd look it over. He left that evening. Right, well, I think I've got everything I need. North Shore Police Department, how can I help you? Hi, this is James Hunter. I was calling to inquire about a car you may have impounded recently. Found out on the forest road between here and between you and Porham. Uh, belonged to a Dr. Robson. I'm a colleague of his. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, we have that car in our lot. Uh, it's being held for the duration of the search. Do you have any information pertaining to his whereabouts? I think I do. Has a full search of his car been conducted? It has. Was an old notepad amongst those possessions? Maybe in the glove compartment or in his briefcase? Uh, yes, sir. Could I trouble you to scan and send those pages to me in an email? I think I have to consult my gov on that one, releasing private information like this. Dr. Robson was a colleague of mine. Yeah, you said that. But I can't just scan these documents in case they're sensitive data. The notebook in question is from a house he was inspecting. Dr. Robson was a paranormal investigator like me. You can, you can goggle our names to prove that fact. 
The book is part of our investigation and may assist in finding him. I'm sorry, sir. I have your number and I'll call you back if I get the go-ahead. Dead ends wherever I look. I find myself refreshing my email constantly, looking to see if the symbol expert Harry or Robson's assistant got back to me, but it's radio silence from all. And where does this notepad fit into all this? There seems to be an element that kicked Robson, a known sceptic, into fifth gear. Pages of names, numbers and dates. How does it relate to an archivist in London? I seem to only be finding questions and no answers. Hopefully Abigail's had better luck today than I did. Mr and Mrs Parker, Harold and Betty to be specific. The couple in the photo? Yup, they're locals all right. Well, were. Oh, I don't like the sound of that. Harold passed away a few years ago, lung cancer. But Betty is still alive. I'm impressed. With Betty? No, with you. Well done. Did you get anything on the photographer? Well, uh, the records of the pier have been buried following years of neglect. Huh. Did you find out why the pier has never been rebuilt? Superstition. No one wants to fund its reconstruction. The town did strike me as weary of the dead. Exactly. They didn't want to rock the spiritual boat. But the secretary there said that she would try to dig something up and send it to us. Either way, this Betty might be able to identify the photographer. Could you identify a man you met briefly, 70 years ago? I guess not. Let's hope she had a flash memory. A what? A flash memory. Like how everyone can remember what they were doing when Princess Diana died, or when 9-11 happened. Maybe all the details of the pier fire are burned into her memory. Hopefully. Any luck on your end? Plenty of dead ends, and very little luck. Apparently the police are seizing innocuous notebooks as evidence these days. Well, something will come up eventually. If not, I'll start kicking down doors. We returned to our accommodation at Porham Cove at the Cause. The room had yet to see repairs and reeked of mildew. The room consisted of a rough mattress, complemented by broken springs and a flickering lamp. The walls sagged with the knowledge of what occurred in this room, their paint flecking and peeling. I sat by the end of my bed, the bulb of the lamp occasionally flickering, casting shadows on the walls. Night time was always the perfect time to reflect on a case, especially coupled with my lack of sleep. I was struggling to carry this case with my own intuition. My gut was screaming that this was all an elaborate scam. Get the hotel on a haunted watch list and enjoy the increase of sales. It wasn't the first time I'd encountered such a con, and certainly not the last. But to affect Dr Robson, a level-headed scholar in such a way, had created a strange pit in my stomach, one that whiskey had been unable to fix. I eventually slept way into the small hours, but it was an uneasy sleep, and I was unable to shake the feeling that something horrible was going to happen. Oh, that takes me back. Betty Parker was the epitome of a sweet old lady. Big smile, bright eyes and curly grey hair. She was overweight, but not unusually so for someone of her age. At almost 90 years old, she still seemed fully mobile and had all of her mental faculties. We should all be so lucky to be self-dependent at that age. God forbid I ever make it to 90. Not the way I carry on. James? Sorry? Oh, don't worry, dear. We all drift off sometimes. I said you look familiar. I had a run of books back in the day and some persistent fans. Oh, that must be where I saw you. You were looking for ghosts or something? Yes. Did you find any? No. Oh, you should have come here then. I see plenty. Really? How can you be certain? Oh, well, I hear Harold all the time. Whenever I'm having a bad day, I feel his warm smile and it cheers me right up. That's not... <clears throat> that's not unusual. Miss Parker, we were hoping if you could identify a photo and its photographer. Oh, just let me put my glasses on. Hmm. Oh, I remember that. Harold had suggested we go down to the pier for the day. 
We had a lovely time, enjoyed some ice cream, and as we were leaving, he suggested we got a photograph. Do you remember what the photographer looked like? He had recently moved here. Tan skin, handsome. His name began with an A. I think he was European. Right. And the fire? Oh, gosh. Yes, the fire. We saw smoke and quickly rushed off the pier. Was anyone hurt in the fire? Oh, well, I think one of the vendors towards the end of the pier died. Awful business. It seems he was trapped by that second fire that started. Very unlucky. What do you think started the second flame? Oh, it was the photographer's flashbulb, my dear. He dropped it in shock and it was still very hot. Think it burnt up some grease or oil. What about the crowd? The crowd? The crowd in the photo, ma'am. They weren't there. What? Well, there were hardly any people on the pier. Just Harold, myself and the photographer. If I remember correctly... Oh, oh, and the people managing the stands. Do you have your copy? Oh, yes. It's up on the wall in the kitchen. The photo hanging on the wall near the small kitchen table was identical to the photo stored on our phone. Same setup, same angle, same couple smiling at the photographer. But the crowd was missing. No Lucy, no Dr Robson. Just Mr and Mrs Parker smiling for her camera as a fire was soon to blaze near them. I popped it out of its frame and flipped it around. No symbol. Uh, Hello, I'm leaving a message for Mr Hunter. It's uh, it's the North Shore Police Department responding to a request you left earlier. My gov gave me the okay to scan and uh, email the documents to you. He says he's a fan of your work. You should be receiving them shortly. So, what's in it? Nothing incriminating. It's just a list of names, numbers and dates. R. Henworth, 2000. 1st of March, 1934. Doesn't really give us much to go off. The dates start just after the Great War and stop after 1952. Did you get anything for an R. Henworth? Not really. If it's someone from 1934, they're unlikely to have an active Twitter account. I thought you were good with computers. Yeah, if the data was actually digitised... I can't Google this stuff that isn't on Google. Hmm. That must be why Dr Robson was looking for an archivist. What about the symbol on the front of the notepad? I've sent the symbol off to my expert. He still hasn't got back to me on the first one, though. We should talk about the photo. Why don't you calm down and not waste time speculating? But if people are really disappearing and appearing in that photo, then... Oh, please. No one is being sucked into photos. You are jumping to conclusions. But what if they are? People going missing and appearing in some photo taken 70 years ago. Why? I don't know. Okay? I'm sorry. I don't know. Everything we find just seems to create more questions. But the simple answer is that this is all a hoax. A scam. And I want it to be a scam. And it's frustrating not knowing either way. I'd hate to be devoting so much time and energy to something that really doesn't warrant it. (laughs) Well, make your mind up. Yeah, I wish I could. I felt like a tailor with too much fabric and no thread to join it. There were no answers, no lines. Lucy disappeared without a trace, as did Dr Robson. No witnesses, no leads. Then the pair of them appear in a photograph on the wall of an old hotel. With a crowd of people who were never in the original. A symbol joins the photo in the pier. Who were these people in the photo? Similar disappearances? I left the hotel to get some air, standing out in the night, pacing up and down the garden as I continued to think. Eventually, an idea struck me. North Shore Police Department, how may I assist you? Hi, it's James Hunter. We briefly spoke last night. You sent me some helpful information and I wanted to thank you. Ah, no problem. Uh, My guff spoke highly of you. He's one of the few. Can I know your name? Uh, Officer Parson. Well, Officer Parson, I was wondering if you would be able to assist me again. 
Sure. What do you need? How often do you have disappearances? It's definitely up there. Not often, but quite a lot. This area has one of the highest disappearance rates in all of England. Really? Any reason why? Several reasons. We're coastal, so there's a lot of water hazards. Caves, tides, drowning and all that. We're rural too, so lots of forests and fields to get lost in. And then there's the iron mine. The iron mine? Yeah, huge deposit of iron. Closed years ago, just after the Second World War. But all that ferrous material messes with people's compasses, something fierce. You're a paranormal person, right? You believe in all that weird stuff. It's complicated. Well, you hear a lot of strange stories from these parts. I had a terrifying one from my mate Bill. Go on. So he was driving from Porham to North Shore late at night. Had his high beams on and all when he was driving through the forest. Goes down a dirt road all rattling around and suddenly he sees someone. They have their thumb up. So he slows down, lets them hop in. Now Bill swears that this man was about six feet tall. Had a real narrow face, thick dark hair and wasn't dressed for the country or a night hike. Anyway, Bill tries to strike up a conversation with this hitchhiker. Nothing. The guy's just sat there, clutching this bag. So they keep driving onwards into the night. Bill tries to strike up another conversation a few more times, and he's just... nothing. The guy just looking out the window. Not a word. So Bill gives up, and he just focuses on the road. Anyway, Bill's driving for about another half an hour, when he realised he never asked the guy where he was going. He turned to ask him, but he was gone. What? He was just... gone. Bill had never slowed beneath a 50, he never heard the door open, and the window wasn't open either, but he swears to God, and on his kid's life, that that man was gone, without a trace. And you trust Bill? He strikes you as a sober man? I know that Bill has not touched a drug or a drop in his life. And what do you make of that? But Bill is a very boring man. I don't mean his parting habits. I mean his phantom hitchhiker. I hear a lot of stories while doing this job, and they're all very captivating. Right. Oh, right, yeah, you had a favour to ask? I was wondering if you could forward the disappearance cases of the local area to me. Names, photos, and last known locations. Yeah, it should be pretty easy. I'll send them your way in a minute. Thank you, officer. Officer Parsons was true to his word, and sent the files to my email address. I made my way back to my room and sat on the squeaky mattress as I waited for them to arrive. The bottle I had brought with me was quickly waning. If this case was going on any longer, I'd need a fresh one. Thank you, Officer Parson. Officer Parsons wasn't lying when he said they'd had a lot of cases. They were spaced out, but they happened. A lot. Plenty of hikers, fishermen, even a geologist or two. Locals, children. I needed to narrow my search. I filtered through the details, choosing only those whose recent location was Porham Cove. Within the last ten years, three fishermen and one young girl, Lucy. I widened the net, 1990 to the 2000s. A local went missing after a hike through the country. It seems this one was closed after he was found alive, shaken and hungry by the iron mine. Quite a few fishermen and boat enthusiasts disappeared too. It wasn't until I extended beyond the 1970s that the net made a big catch. At least seven out-of-towners staying at Porham Cove went missing in the recent vicinity. It seems most of them happened on country roads. M. Cower, S. Wood, E. Hayes, J. Phillips, C. McCarthy, A. Baker, K. Rose. Their photos took some time to load, given the internet speed of the area. I slowly poured myself another glass as each one loaded, chunk by chunk. Last known photos. They were old, but still gave enough detail. Slowly, by the flickering light of the lamp, I held the infamous photo against the missing persons, and my blood turned cold. Each of these missing persons was within the crowd, looking shocked, scared, confused. Oh, wow. The pit in my stomach had returned with a vengeance. All I could hear was the blood pounding in my ears. My heart was beating a violent drum solo in my chest. I steeled myself and grabbed my phone, heading out into the corridor. The hotel seemed quiet, deathly quiet. I slowly pushed Abigail's door open and peeked in. I could barely see her dark form in the unlit room, but she was there, sleeping. 
Tiptoeing as quietly as I physically could, I made my way towards the attic, wincing with each creaking floorboard. The attic and its haphazardly stacked boxes were coated in dust. When I was sure I was alone, I activated the light on my phone and began to quietly open the boxes. The newest and nearest contained newer items, things marketed and branded for the 21st century, definitely the possessions of the cause. Moving quietly, I made my way to the older boxes and quietly peeled them open, holding my breath as dust flew off the surface. It didn't take long to find what I was looking for, the guest book. Shaking, I opened the book and turned the pages. This place had seen a lot of guests, but I went straight to the back. 1972. The last guest. K. Rose. I grimaced and kept turning back. 1968. A. Baker. 1967. M. McCarthy and J. Phillips. There were other names, those that weren't on the list. I made sure to quickly take photos of the pages, blinking profusely as the flash went off. M. Jower, S. Wood and E. Hayes were there too, all within the guest book. They had all stayed here, at this hotel. They were all missing, and they were all within the photo. Mr. Hunter, what are you doing? Starring Jamie Evans as James Hunter and Isabella Barbieri as Abigail Corbin. Also featuring Sharon Williams, Jack Byrne, Benton Hodges, Julie Carter, Megan Condon. Narration by David Anthony Green. Opening and closing themes by James Crow. Haunted, the audio drama, is created by Jamie Evans, with all episodes produced and directed by Jamie Evans and Benton Hodges. Audio engineering by Benton Hodges, Charles Topping and Jamie Evans. Haunted is a production of Impala Films and is recorded at Free Sprite Media Studios, with special thanks to Duncan Newham for equipment support. Thank you for listening to this audio presentation. Come back next week for the next terrifying chapter of Haunted, the audio drama. Hi, this is Jamie Evans. And Benton Hodges. We're the producers of Haunted, the audio drama. We hope that you've been enjoying the show and we encourage you to keep track of our goings on by following our social media accounts. We've got a growing fan community who enjoy sharing theories, fan art and generally discussing the show. Plus, it's a great way for you to keep up with all the latest news about Haunted and our future projects. Follow us on Twitter at The Impala Films, on Instagram at Haunted Audio Drama, or one word, no capitals, or you can find us on Facebook at Impala Revolution. Enjoy the show and hungry for more? You can find us on Patreon at Impala Films, where you can donate to the show and get rewards such as early access to episodes and a behind-the-scenes podcast that goes through the myths and legends that inspired Haunted. Lastly, please consider leaving a review on your podcast app of choice. It really does help us reach more listeners. Thank you so much to every one of you for listening to our little show. It means so much to us. Yeah, the reception has totally blown us away. Thank you for listening, and we will see you next time. <laughs>